Hello. Since many of our classmates uh, probably are not familiar with some of the devices we've been studying, what I've decided to do is take a look at the exterior of a router. And here I've got a Cisco 2610XM. It's, uh, I got it from eBay for about $10. It's very old and it's very cheap. The reason why is it's gone out of, they stopped selling this model in 2002 and they stopped servicing it and supporting it in, back in 2008. So that means that you can't put a modern Cisco operating system on this device anymore. And while it may be very old, it's also good enough for me to practice with. So let's take a look at what we've got here. On the front, you can see there's not really a whole lot going on here. We've got the model number series over here. And then a few lights, one of them power, another one that says activity. Those are kind of self-explanatory. But the third one is RPS. And that's one I'd never heard of before. Basically, that's the redundant power supply. So that light would come on if there was an issue. And the redundant power supply is something a bit like a UPS. I don't have one and don't need one, so let's move on. Over here on the side panels, we... We've got some ventilation and a mounting bracket. And you can see there's some more screw holes here to mount this if you were going to be installing it in a computer rack. On the bottom, there's a whole bunch of warning labels down here. Compliance issues as well. One of the other thing, only things that's probably of much use is the manufacture date. This one back in 26th of November 2002. Another important device one of the cooling fans. So let's take a look at the back. On the rear panel, you can see that there are a couple of things. This is where most of the important things are going on here. We've got the Cisco 2610XM. So this is the model number, and then here is the serial number that goes with this device. So you could use these together to find out a lot of information online about this device. Or it may be important for your inventory purposes at work. Next we've got the power socket and also the power switch over here. It's very convenient. This area in here is where we're seeing the ports. Now this is probably the most important thing to us at this point. So these two lines here are for administration of the device. One here is labeled in light blue and that's the console port. That's a, a serial connection that we can connect to a computer and use it to directly configure this device. It's light blue because it matches the color of this light blue cord, just as a handy reference. I don't have a serial cable on my computer, so what I need to do is buy one of these serial to USB adapters. Again, less than $10. Pretty convenient. The other port that's down here is called an aux port, labeled in black. That's if you have a modem connection. You could use it to remotely configure the router. Usually that's not used. Over here we've got the fast Ethernet 00, zero labeled on a little yellow. And this port will be the one that we use to connect to our network inside the building. The other thing that we have here are a couple of expansion slots. This one has a T1 DSU-CSU which is a card that you can plug in. This one happens to have an Ethernet port connection on it but some of them also have a serial cable. This is the device that actually that makes the interface between the ISP and this device right here. And finally, over here on this side, we've got another very large spot, which is for the networking module. This is also a, an optional device that you can plug into your slide into here. And that can be used to address certain issues of security, or even to put in a bank of Ethernet switches, so that we, or ports, so that we could use this single device as a switch and a router at the same time. In the future, I hope to crack this box open and take a look inside so that we can see that it's really just a Unix-like computer that has a very limited job, but it does very fast. 
inheritance. Thanks.